um, we've already talked about this, but I'll just quickly go through this again because it is going to come up later. So direct contact, easiest way to catch the disease. Um, you would know from you you would know from COVID nineteen from the pandemic. You know, no shaking hands. We did elbows. Even fist bump was like not recommended. Um, always elbows, and so that is because there's that physical contact that's happening. Then we've got indirect contact, and that occurs when pathogens can live outside of host cells. So pathogens live in the environment after being spread to something like influenza, where the pathogens are in the air, like after someone sneezes or coughs, the um the particles um, are in the air and that can easily cause um, and someone can easily contract that there's vector transmission so insects like malaria like mosquitoes and ticks which cause the Lyme disease they can pass on the disease and finally uh, contamination so pathogens can be harbored in food and water and there's abundance of nutrients um, because there's abundance of nutrients in food and water that encourages growth with vector we talked about transplacental so, fr- um, so the fetus can um, get a disease from the mother via the placenta and examples of transplacental transmission include HIV and herpes vaginal birth and um, because there's microflora present in the mother's birthing canal that can be passed on to the child during birth and examples include sexual sexually transmitted diseases and finally breastfeeding so fluids and nutrients um, can potentially infect um, can potentially pass on uh, infectious diseases um, through the milk to the child okay so now let us now we sort of slowly starting to venture into the process of what actually happens um, and we will talk about immune system very shortly which I think uh, most of the time people love talking about like that's their favorite bit in um, module 7 and it it, 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 that's fair, right? Because it is a really amazing topic. So let's now start thinking about how adaptations are occurring in um, in the host and also that are occurring um, more specifically in, uh, yeah, that is more specifically occurring in both the host cells and also the uh, pathogens that facilitate entry and transmission. <laughs> So entry first, there are cell wall degrading enzymes that the uh, pathogen will have that are able to degrade the the cytoplasmic membrane of the host cell. They can also have toxins which damage host tissues and also they can disable the host immune system. They can also have effector proteins. So effector proteins are proteins which are secreted to help pathogens to enter the cell and suppress their host defenses. And um, with the case of COVID-19, effector proteins are used um, in order for the cell to sort of get into the host membrane through like fusion. Um, it's a, it's a, Obviously, there's so many different proteins involved, um, but that's one of the ways in which it happens. Uh, also, the cell can sorry the pathogen can uh, can um, be adhesive to the cell wall of the uh, to the cells of the host, and that can help them colonize the tissues. Finally, we also have extremophiles, path, uh, extremophile pathogens, which can help survival inside um, which can help survival inside the host cells. So now let's look at transmission. So firstly, protective covering, we've got bacterial capsules and viral envelopes. Reservoirs, they can be, they can allow long-term survival outside of hosts. So this is how they are basically, um, ho- these cells are basically, you know, protecting themselves um, while they're waiting to get into another, you know, into another host cell. So they Like I said, they've got protective coverings. They can't rest in reservoirs. So through that, they can survive for a while before they gain a host. Um, They can also use vectors in some cases, which increases transmission efficiency. So that, as we saw with the plasmodium protozoa, and and the vectors can help 
carry the pathogen from one host to another. Structural adaptations, so injection machinery like with mosquitoes. Um, and finally, we've got rapid species evolution, so higher rates of mutation during replication, which allows for new adaptations to arise. And we saw that with the COVID-19 pandemic, where we started off with first the coronavirus, we went from alpha to beta to gamma to um, the Omicron virus, right? So this whole the way in which it replicated quite quickly and became more powerful as time and more um, yeah more powerful as time went by. Okay.